Something I've been trying to do in Street Fighter lately is learn how to play the matchups. And the best way I can explain to you what I mean is through League of Legends. And before you, you groan and you moan and you close the video, hear me out. I, I think I can win you over. Something beautiful about League of Legends is that it's been around for so long and so many people have played it that these matchups have been mined out and discovered and rediscovered so many times. It goes so far in depth that there's websites like this, RuvenLOL.com, written by a challenger Riven player. That is all things Riven. And this little graphic here, this little chart, if you will, is every single matchup you will run into into the top lane, how to play it, how not to play it, and some notes that might be useful to you. The closest thing you'll find to something like this in fighting games is a character discord where information is often not categorized correctly or just not there at all. It can be kind of hard to look through and there's nowhere it's nowhere near as robust as this website. And so generally what I'll do is when I'm loading into a game, I'll just open up this website and look for the matchup that I'm about to play. And in the game that I want to show you a little bit of in a second here, we're going to be playing against Mordekaiser. So what we need to do is level one all in him. Uh, that, that is a possibility, right? That doesn't mean just run at him, right? You, you take it when you can. Uh, play safe till level three. Avoid every Q with either a sidestep. Uh, a Q or an E. So Riven's Q is kind of like a Rekka. If you play fighting games, it has multiple follow-ups and it, it moves her in different directions or forward. Um, and then her E is just a dash. It gets her a shield. And then you can all in, at, all in him at six when he's around half HP. There's a lot of prerequisites and a lot of things that you have to know uh, in order to... You, you can't just read this and then do exactly what it says and then win, right? You, you have to have some common sense about it and some game sense. Uh, what not to do, fighting him when his passive is proc. And then all inning him when his W is fully charged. So I, I have played League of Legends for a couple of years, but not seriously. I play very casually and I did not know what his W did. <laughs> so I went to OP.GG and just looked it up real quick. And he just stores some of the damage that you do to him. And then he has that little bar, I think, above his head. And if you fight him while it's full and he activates it, he just gets a big shield. So it doesn't make any sense to fight him when that bar is full. And so now let's take a look at the actual gameplay. Uh, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. We're gonna take a look at the first part of landing phase. I do, big up a, uh, I do build up a big lead and then kind of throw it <laughs> at some point because I start fighting him at six and his ultimate, if you don't know, isolates you and steals your stats. So he basically just used the lead that I got against him against me and just came back, right? And I think we, we do end up winning the game, but after landing phase, I don't have as much impact as I should because I, I threw my lead. So right now, what's going through my head is I have the advantage at level one, right? And I need to make sure that I dodge uh, his Q or Z, whichever one it, like slams the hammer down. You'll see it in a second. So I'm really focused on CSing. He's going to uh, come up to last hit. So I kind of want to poke him. You see me walk towards the minion because I think he's going to walk up closer and he doesn't. There, I don't dodge. I don't use my Q to dodge or whatever. Here I go in for kind of a really trash trade. You notice I'm not doing the fast combo either. Riven does have a, a combo where... You can get some more autos and you get some more damage in using her passive, I think, uh, and some animation cancels. But there I just kind of did Q auto, Q auto to build up those passive stacks. So now he's level two. I'm level one, so I'm at a disadvantage. And now I kind of want to wait till three, like the guide said. If I didn't win all in level one, now I'm going to wait till three because I think that's when I have the advantage again. Here I'm just CSing under the tower. I notice he's like kind of just walking around over there, so I try and end him. I thought he was AFK, to be honest. <laughs> I thought he just wasn't paying attention, so I wanted to put some damage on him, because I'm a scumbag like that. Uh, here, I'm just a little bit pressured under tower. Not too much. I don't really care. He's pushing into me. Now I have a big health lead, and I'm level 3, and I don't think he has any health potions. So, huge advantage for me. He blows a couple cooldowns. I dodge the little Q thing. I remember uh, that the guide said when his passive is proc, that little circle around him, don't fight him, and he popped his shield, so I just ran. It, it, it might look like I should have fought him there, but I felt like I would have lost in the passive and with the shield. Now he doesn't have either of them, right? He doesn't have his shield, he doesn't have his passive in it. I just take him out pretty easily. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit to another moment here. My jungler tried to gank. It was a failed gank. He warded, and then he flashed away. Um, and now I, I feel like I still have an advantage. I have minion advantage. I also have item advantage because I did solo kill him earlier. I don't remember what I have. Let me see. I don't remember how to look, but I'm pretty sure it's like a, a Coalfields Warhammer or something. So I got some CDR. There I get hit by the Q. He also has a lot of passive stacks, so I E out of the uh, the hand. You know, it said in the guide to either Q, E, or sidestep out of the hand or the Q, right? You don't want to get hit by it. And I got really scared. <laughs> Here I hit six, so I get really confident start fighting him. Passive uh, procs, and he has the full passive shield that he can activate, this little bar here. So if he presses W, he's going to get a big old shield. But I fight him anyways because I'm six. 
I flash out of the passive, come back in. He gets the big shield and it doesn't matter. It almost mattered. I live by a hair. And in actuality, that probably wasn't the smartest fight to take, but I had the level advantage and I had ultimate. So I just went for it and it worked out. Here we're a little bit later in the game. He is pushing me back into the tower. This is the last kill that we'll take a look at because after this, uh, I do fight him when he has ultimate and just lose. I just straight up lose and he, he starts snowballing back the other way. But I do feel pretty confident at this moment. I'm pretty sure I have my mythic items so my big power spike item right now. And he just has a lot of HP. I don't remember what exactly what he has. You'll see I'm doing a lot of damage. Uh, I proc, I think that's Conqueror. I think that's what I have. I proc something. Uh, and then he procs his passive and he has his giant shield. So I, I don't want to fight him. I'm doing short little trades, doing short little burst trades to try and chip away at that HP. There I get really scared that I was going to get by the hand. I probably would have died. Here I pop ultimate. He pops everything. It doesn't work out for him. And I, I get really lucky again, to be honest. But yeah, that, that's kind of the gist of learning to play the matchup for me so far is just finding a game plan, whether it's the one that I make up myself or one that gets posted somewhere and just trying to stick to it as closely as possible and get things done, right? You can't stick to it to a T all the time because the game doesn't always play the same every single game or else it wouldn't really be a game. It'd just be kind of like a chore. But just having something as simple as this as a few lines on like an Excel spreadsheet on how to play the matchup really does help. And, and it's really helped me in League of Legends and in Street Fighter. But yeah, if this helped you in any way or if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and I'll talk to you again soon.